In this video, we'll show you how to create components in WeWeb that you can reuse throughout your app or in shared libraries. Let's start by creating a component. In WeWeb, you can create a component from any element. You can transform any element into a component. So let's start by adding a button and dropping it on our page. We could make this button a component by clicking on this icon here or the button new component. If we create this, we can say this button and create it here. As soon as you've created a component, you can see that here you are inside a component and in the layout as well. To go back to the HTML tree of the layout. Now, as soon as you've transformed uh, the, um, an element into a component, it will be available in your project library. So here in the libraries menu, in my project library in the components, I now see my best button. And if I go to the add menu in the project UI kit, I can now drop my best button on the page. So here I have two instances of my best button and let me remove it from the container. I can rename it instance one to make this clearer and instance two. So I have two instances of my button and actually let me put back a container it'll be nicer to it'll be easier to see so there we go and i will add a little bit of padding to make things nicer okay so i have two instances of the same component if i am on instance one and I make a change here on the ins on instance one, I make a change to, let's say, the width. So let's say I give it a fixed width of 200 pixels. So now it's larger than instance two, and I can even change its background color. So change it to green, for example. So now I have instance one is green, and instance two is blue, and it is smaller. So that's fine to edit one instance. But let's say I didn't want only instance one to be green. I wanted both instances. And in fact, I wanted all instances of my component to be green in my web app. I would remove the color on the instance and go back to editing mode. So now I am inside my component. And I can go to the style tab of the component and change the background color there. There we go. So now both instances of the component are green because I changed the style at component level. Now, if I wanted to change the color of just one instance, I would go back to the instance, make sure I select the instance I want to change and switch the color. So the style at instance level overrides the style that we added to the component. Okay, so those are the basics of components, the super basics. You can save an element uh, as a component, reuse it everywhere in your app, change the style of a single instance, or if you change the style of the component itself, it will affect all instances of the component. Now let's have a look at more advanced settings in, um, in the components feature. Here I have one container with four instances of a component called button. It's this one here, my button. So here in, if I'm on my instances, I can see 
two inputs here that I can change, where I can change the value. I can change the value of the style. So if I, can, if I say secondary, suddenly instance one is the same as instance two. And if I change the usage, if it's not for my website, if it's for my app, then suddenly instance one matches instance four. So how did I do that at component level? Let's look at the component itself. So what we did is create two properties. One style property, which is a text, um, a text property and the default value is primary. I added this property to the styles tab and I decided it was not bindable, but I could change it back and say, okay, you know what? I changed my mind. I want this to be bindable. And if I save, if I go back to my instance, now I see the little plug icon, which means that this could be dynamic. It doesn't need to be fixed. So that's the first property that my component has. The second is the usage property. And this is a select with two options. So you can, I could add others, but I won't. So when, um, when in the drop down it says for my website, the value, the corresponding value is marketing. And when the label is for my app, the corresponding value is product. Okay, so I've saved this. And the first thing I did then is in my styles tab of the component, I said, you know what? My text color will be different if the style is primary. So, or if it's something else. So if the style is primary, I will want the text color to be gray 100. And I bound this to a color in my library. And if the style is not primary, so if it's secondary or anything else, I mean, then it should be blue. So here on instance two, because the style is secondary, the text is blue. Now I applied similar logic to my background color and also to the borders color. And then with a hover state, again, similar, we change the color based on the style value of the component. So that's the first cool thing that we did. The second thing we did, and here I am going to switch back to for my website. The second thing we did at component level is a formula. So in components, you can create local properties, variables, workflows, formulas, and triggers. These are scoped to the component. So the variables that you create at component level that you create here will not be seen in the data tab in the global variables. Same goes with global workflows and global formulas of your project. The ones you create here, the workflows and formulas you create at component level will not be visible in the global workflows and global formulas. So that's a nice way to keep things nice and tidy and um, super easy to debug. So here I have a formula that is meant to customize my the text inside my button. So it changes the button text based on the style and usage values of my properties. And let me show you how it works. I'm using a switch formula to decide if um, what text to display. So let me build this from scratch so you see what's happening. So here, the first thing I do is I concatenate the two properties. So style dash usage. So in this case, the current value is primary dash marketing. And then what I'm doing is saying, okay, take this as an expression. 
And if the value of that expression is primary marketing, then I want the text to be try WeWeb for free. If it's secondary, then I want it to say book a demo. If it's a primary product button, then I want to say log in. And if it's a secondary product button, I want to say log out. So now I can save this and use it on my text. So here you see I have my local properties and formulas. So the formulas that are local, that are scoped to the component. That's it for an introduction to WeWeb components. Of course, you can build much more complex components, but to get you started, I leave you with three key takeaways. Number one, once you transform an element into a component, it will be available in the project library and any other project that uses that library. Number two, when you're editing a component, make sure to check whether you're on the component or on the instance. If you want to make a change that is applied to all the instances of a component, you need to be inside the component when you make that change. If you want to make a change to one instance of the component, you need to make sure you're outside that component and on that instance before you make that change. Number three, you can add local properties, variables, workflows, formulas, and triggers to your components. These will enable you to add logic and features and styles to your component scoped to that particular component, just like a traditional web developer would do.